Greetings comrades, Multigame Master one reporting in, and welcome back to Let's Play 100% Banjo-Tooie. In the last episode, we started exploring Pterodactyl Land, and in this episode, we are going to continue our prehistoric expedition of Pterodactyl Land. We're going to start by going inside the mountain. It's cool that we can go to a place like this, except there's really not much to explore in here. Nothing but torches, a flooded area, cave walls and an area in the center of the mountain that seems rather suspicious for some reason. We need to find a way to get to it. There's a fly disc pad over here so we can use that, and I'm not going to grab those feathers because I'm still pretty much full on feathers. So let's fly to the center of the room. You'll see a switch up ahead as well, and if you press it with the beak barge, it will activate an underwater bridge which you can use to get back across and leave the mountain whenever you want to instead of swimming. But for now, we're going to do this. Chomposaurus! Summit Cramp Carnivore! That's a plesiosaur, by the way. Oh, look at the size of that thing. Hey, fella, how are you? Wait, why are you sniffing me? You're not hungry, are you? Wait, please don't eat me! Oh, the humanity! Are we dead? No, we're not dead. Oh, thank God. Can you hear me in there? I won't digest you if you help me out with my little stomach problem. Do you want to hear what you've got to do? As long as you don't digest us! These nasty blark ulcers keep appearing from my stomach lining and they really hurt. I want you to shoot them before they disappear again. Blue ones are worth 3 points. Green ones are worth 2 points and red are only worth one point. If you can score 75 points, you'll ease the pain a lot. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Okay, Chomposaurus, we'll help you out with your little ordeal. So as Chomposaurus explained, there are these ulcers flying around within his stomach. And with the minigame beginning, we have 60 seconds to find and shoot as many as we can. We need to match the score of 75 points in order to get a prize. The blue ulcers are worth 3 points, green ones are worth 2, and the red ones are worth 1 point. To give you a chance, you are given special eggs as ammo so you won't ever have to worry about running on ammo and plus you can shoot whenever you please. And however long you please as well. Okay, just about 20 seconds on the clock and we're getting very close to our goal. These blarks look really scary. And at this point, I can honestly say that there were times in which I had stomach cramps, like everyone else in the world, and those were not quite some good sensational moments. They really do indeed hurt. We now finish the game with 115 points. Ah, that feels better. I swallowed this awful thing earlier. Thought it was a biscuit. Please take it with you when you leave. You thought this Jiggy was a biscuit? Well, maybe next time you should watch what you eat. Do you want to play again? Heck no, I'm getting out of here. Now that the minigame is complete and the Jiggy is acquired, we can now get out of the Chomposaurus by going up his digestive tract. As disgusting as that seems. I wonder if he's gonna spit us out. He just spat us out. Ow! That's painful and disgusting. I really hope I never see that Chomposaurus again. I didn't even see him while we were swimming around in this place. Let's just get out of here and explore another part of Pterodactyl Land. See you never, Chomposaurus. Okay, on to another part of Pterodactyl Land. We have Mumbo Skull over there, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. In fact, we'll worry about it in the next episode. Now, along the way across this quicksand-like swamp, there will be some Saurosauruses that will try to knock you in. You can take them out if you want to, but get past it as quickly as you can, and if you fall in, there will be a Dragoonda to bite you. Now, inside this boulder, we have a Treble Clef. Now, let's get a move on. There's so much of Terry Dathalan to explore, so many prehistoric discoveries to make. It's amazing. Over here, we have another train switch, which we will go ahead and press down. And this activates the double doors, so now the train station within Pterodactyl Land is available for Chuffy to travel to. And we will need Chuffy later on. Now over here we have a cage Jinjo and a switch. 
The cage and the switch seem to somehow be linked, but we can't press it down. We need a dinosaur for that. I'm thinking that maybe Humba Wumba can help us. Speaking of which, there's her wigwam over there. But before we check things out over here, I'm actually going to grab a pair of springy step shoes, then make my way over to that wall over there and see what we can find past it. Up we go. Now let's see what we can find. Hey look, it's a Diplodocus, who seems sad and his tongue is sticking out. That's gross and depressing. Dippy, seeker of beverages. Aw, poor thing. Brr, so thirsty. I need water badly. Why not go and look for some then? It's not going to just drop out of the sky. The sun burns poor Dippy, so I must stay in my cave. Please get me a drink. You poor, poor dinosaur. Hang in there, Dippy. We will get you some water as soon as we can. Although, I don't really think that it's going to be easy for us to pull that off. Especially with us having to do something like grab a bucket and make several thousand trips back and forth from one area within the Isle of Hags back to Pterodactyl Land. That would just make things way too complicated. Maybe we'll find another way to get Dippy some water. Who knows, maybe it'll rain or something. Now we're making our way back to the Cyracosaurus family cave because now that Banjo has learned the move Taxi Pack, there is something that we can do in here. So let's make our way over to the split up pads over here and have Banjo and Kazooie split up. Now let's go check on Scrat. Hey Scrat, how are you? Oh, I do feel slightly unwell. It must have been that caveman I ate. Or perhaps it was the pterodactyl dung. I really hope it's not any of those cases. So with the taxi pack, Banjo can stuff Scrat inside his backpack. And how he can fit inside Banjo's backpack? Don't ask me. It's the way the game is intended by Nintendo and Rare. At any rate, with Scrat in tow, we can now take him over to the train station and then call for Chuffy so that we can travel to the Isle of Hags clifftop. We're doing this because, as you may recall from the last episode, Scratty said that there was a crazy shaman in the Isle of Hags clifftop that could possibly help with Scrat's case of sickness. Which is why we're actually going to make our way over there right now. So let's go ahead and call Chuffy the train. Chuffy is enjoying the attractions of Witchy World. Would you like Chuffy to pick you up? Yes. And here comes Chuffy. Wait a second. Witchy World train station. Oh guys, that reminds me. Remember Scrut stole some money from her mom's purse and made her way over to the train station and proceeded on to Witchy World? Well, now that Chuffy is coming over to Terry Dattel Land, Scrut should be able to run home at this point as soon as Chuffy stops. So it seems as though that we've already solved one of the Cyracosaurus' family's problems, and two left. Run home, Scrut. I hope Mom won't be too mad at me. She probably won't. But then again, if she does, then worst case scenario, you could probably be grounded for a long time. Thanks for returning my lost child. She'll be cleaning out our cave for the next month as punishment. Yeah, I knew that she was going to be in trouble. At any rate, that's the first problem solved and two left. Now let's unpack Scrat in Chuffy's cabin and see if he's feeling any better. Oh, I'm still feeling rather rough. Is this train going to a doctor? It certainly is, Scrat. Just hang in there. We're gonna get you over to a doctor as soon as we can. Here's a swap call over here, so let's get on top of it and press the B button to switch over to Kazooie. And we're gonna have her reunite with Banjo back at the train station so that we can travel from Pterodactyl Land to the Isle of Hags Clifftop. It's not gonna take long for Kazooie to get over there, especially given her speed and the fact that she's more faster and agile than Banjo. Now let's see, where is Banjo again? 
Here he is. And now that the duel have been reunited, let's use Chuffy the train and travel to the Isle of Hags clifftop. If I can get up the ladder. Thank you. Okay, let's do this. Isle of Hags, please. And we're off. All aboard! Hang tight, Scrat. We're gonna get you a doctor as soon as we can. Just hold on, little buddy. And yes, guys, it may seem as though that I'm abandoning Pterodactyl Land now, especially given the fact that we still have so much more stuff to do. But once we find a way to heal Scrat, we will come back there. Trust me, we're not done yet. Now that we're finally here in the Isle of Hag's cliff top, let's head on out and find Mumbo. He isn't too far from this position. In fact, as you guys may recall, he was about halfway through the cliff top. So if we start walking, we should be able to reach him within a few seconds. While getting past the Uggers and Grunty Dactos along the way. Here he is over here. Extra honeycombs. I'm really not going to worry about that. Especially since we're full on health. And it's a good thing that we still have this extra Gobo. So we can ask for Mumbo's help right away. Hey Mumbo, how's it going? Listen, we really need your help and we've got a Gobo for you. So can you help us out with your magic? Thanks, Mumbo. Fix that man skirt of yours. And get out your magic stick. And now that we're controlling Mumbo, let's make our way back over to Chuffy the Train. And see what we can do about Scrat's predicament of sickness. To heal Scrat, all you want to do is to make your way over to Mumbo's pad over here and simply activate his magic. Hope this works. Heal. Six Thyracosaurus. Within a few seconds, Scratch should be feeling much more better. It's pretty cool that you can heal by means of using magic. Instead of conventional means of medicine. Imagine how easier things would be in our lives if we could just heal with magic and not medicine. But alas, no such thing exists. At least to the best of my knowledge. Now that Scrat is 100% healthy again, Mumble's work for this area is now done, so we'll return him home. Yes, Mumble, I know it seems as though that you did too little within this area, but we will make good use of your skills once again when we get back to Pterodactyl Land. So don't fret. You are a credit to the team name. Now that we're back to controlling Banjo and Kazooie, let's make our way back over to Chuffy the Train and travel back to Pterodactyl Land. It's a good thing that Scrat is feeling 100% better again, and I hope he doesn't get sick on the way home. Alright, back over to Chuffy the Train we go, and now from here, we'll make our way back to Pterodactyl Land. In we go. Let's do this. Pterodactyl Land, please. And we're off on Chuffy again. All aboard! Once we get back to Pterodactyl Land, Scratch should be feeling much more better, and he'll be able to travel home. I'm still wondering how it is that Scrat ended up being sick in the first place. I hope it wasn't the bad case of the Caveman or the Pterodactyl Dung. That would be either violent or disgusting. Alright Scrat, we're here, so now you can run home. Rar! I feel real healthy now! So I'm going to run all the way home! That's right, Scrat. Run free and healthy. Still wondering how you got sick in the first place. Thanks for healing my sick child. That'll teach him not to wash his claws before dinner. Wait, that's it? That's how he got sick in the first place? Well, kids, I guess that's one thing we can learn from this, and it's a good life lesson. Always wash your hands before dinner, otherwise you'll end up feeling sick like Scrat. At any rate, that's the second of the Styracosaurus' family's problems solved, which means there's one left. But we're going to worry about that a little later. Right now, we want to travel over to Umba's Wigwam. Oh, wait a second, I just realized, now we don't have that extra Globo. 
Well, luckily, there's a place I know that we can go to in order to get ourselves another one. What we need to do is to make our way up here, then move along this slope by means of using the talent rot. And within a few seconds, we should be able to approach an area that has a globo right over here. And now that we have a globo, we can make our way over to Wumba's wigwam and ask her to transform us into something else. Of course, given the environment within Terry Land, she could transform us into something like a dinosaur. Well, we'll figure that out right about now. Hey, Umba Wumba, how's it going? We got a globo for you. So now you can transform us into something, right? Right. Okay, let's go. Humble Wumba transforms us into... A T-Rex. A small one at that. Wumba called this baby T-Rex. Use left stick to move. That's it? That's all we can do? This magic is useless. We can't even do something like roar. Surely there's someone that can help us. Wow, a new dinosaur. What are you? A vicious T-Rex. You're not that vicious. You don't even know how to roar properly, do you? Uh, no, I don't think we do. It's easy. Just tap X for a short roar and hold X for a long one. Thanks. Let's go roar at someone. Thanks for your help, Archosaurus. Also, I apologize for your face being covered up. Really sorry about that. You see this door right over here? Give it a roar and it will open by itself. And inside this passageway, we have a Cheeto page and a signpost which we will read. As soon as I can stand still. Roar! 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 Then the glittering prize will be yours. Hmm, that sounds like a code. We're gonna have to make a note of that. And I suspect that the glittering prize in question is a Jiggy, so we'll definitely have to make a note of that. I bet you guys didn't expect the baby T-Rex to walk underwater, did you? Now that we're a T-Rex, remember that Unga Bunga that was guarding the entryway to the Oogle Boogle Cave? Well, I'm thinking that now we can scare him off, although chances of that happening are pretty slim, especially considering the fact that we're a baby T-Rex. But hey, we can give it a shot anyway. I mean, who knows? It might work. Nope, it didn't work. He just laughs at us. Ha ha ha. That feeble roar. Me not scared. We failed as a T-Rex to scare away a caveman. Such a shame. Guess we'll have to find another means of scaring him off. I'm sure we'll figure it out at some point. For now, let's just travel back to Wumba's wigwam and scale the mountain right now. Path to nest. I wonder what nest we're going up to. It can't be a bird nest. I mean, I think it's too early in the prehistoric period for birds to exist. But then again, maybe I could be wrong. You guys can let me know about that in the comments below the video. Here's another signpost. Only when the secret code of the dinosaurs is heard will this Jiggy be yours. Well, luckily we do already know the code, so let's give it a try and roar. There we go, the cage door is now open and we can get the Jiggy inside. Now at this point in time, I reckon that's everything that we can do as a baby T-Rex, so let's make our way back over to Humba's wigwam and transform back to Banjo and Kazooie. And yes, guys, it may seem as though that there was little done with the baby T-Rex, but hey, at least we made some decent progress, right? By the way, that dinosaur switch over there can't be pressed with the baby T-Rex. We're gonna have to come back with something bigger. For now, let's just transform back into Banjo and Kazooie. Every little progress helps. Okay, we're back into Banjo and Kazooie. And we still have more of Terry Land to explore, but we're out of time for this episode, so I'm going to end things off here. So in the next episode, we're going to explore more of Terry Land and scale the mountain for more prehistoric discoveries that we can make. So, 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And until the next episode, this is Multigame Master 1. Over and out. See you later, comrades.